Hello, and welcome to Engineering Ethics at NJIT. I'm your instructor, Daniel Estrada, and uh, I'm recording this video as the welcome video for the spring 2021 semester. Um, I've made a lot of changes to the syllabus and the assignment structure this semester. Um, I've streamlined the course in a bunch of ways. I hope you enjoy the course. I hope you learn a lot uh, from this course. Um, in this video, uh, I will be introducing myself. I'll be saying a little bit about the goals for the course and what you should expect from the course. Um, and then I'll go through some of the syllabus policies, uh, the lesson structure, the assignment expectations, and so on. Um, all, the syllabus and all the information here is already on Canvas. So you can go to Canvas and read the full syllabus. It has all the information that you need. Any question that you have will be answered by the syllabus. I think the syllabus is something like 15 or 16 pages long. I'm not going to go over all of that detail in this video. Uh, in this video, I just want to hit the highlights so you have a rough idea of what's going on and you can get started uh, with the class. Um, but uh, if you have more questions, uh, I strongly recommend going to look at that syllabus in some detail. Um, okay, let's go ahead and get started. So. Uh, let me put myself up here. Uh, so, hello, uh, my name is Daniel Estrada. You can call me Dan or Professor Estrada, uh, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, I have been teaching engineering ethics at NJIT since 2014 when I started as an adjunct. I became a, a lecturer in 2015, a full time lecturer in 2015. Um, and I've been teaching this course ever since. Uh, it's my primary responsibility to teach this class. I, I teach about four, three or four sections uh, a semester. Um, this uh, spring semester in 2021, I'm teaching three sections. Uh, I also teach in the winters and summers. Um, I, I got my PhD uh, from the University of Illinois, in uh, my PhD is in philosophy from the University of Illinois. Um, I got that in 2014, and I got this job pretty quickly afterwards. Uh, I, have, I also have a bachelor's degree in computer science from the University of California, Riverside. Um, and I, I really just love this course. Uh, philosophy of technology is what I'm really passionate about. My own research is on artificial intelligence and autonomy and some of the uh, ethical issues around AI. Um, we'll do a whole unit on AI in, at the end of this semester. And I have another class here I teach at NJIT, uh, HSS 405 on artificial intelligence and autonomy. Um, but uh, I really like the engineering ethics class because it gives us a chance to talk more generally about the ethical challenges of uh, technological uh, society and the particular role that engineers play um, in, in uh, creating that society, uh, creating that technological uh, system. Um, so I uh, hope you enjoy the course. Uh, I hope you learned something. I look forward to learning from you. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, um, so uh, I did that. Let me get myself out of the way here. OK, so um, uh, I, I know that students come into this class with a variety of expectations uh, of what this class uh, is or uh, uh, is not. Um, it's an ethics class. I think a lot of students come into this class thinking that they know what ethics is. They know what the difference between right and wrong is. They learned about the difference between right and wrong when they were in kindergarten. Uh, and so um, I, I think, you, and maybe you all think that you're uh, more or less good people um, and that you don't need a lot of uh, sort of finger wagging, uh, you know, some, some philosopher wagging their finger at you telling you to be a better person. Um, so if what if the goal of this class is just to teach you about the difference between right and wrong, like you know maybe you already have it, and maybe that's that means the class is going to be easy. Maybe it means it's, it'll be an easy A. But uh, I, I I tend to find that students enter into this class with pretty low expectations of what this class is going to be about. Um, if you've ever uh, held a job at a large institution or a corporation or um, a, a public institution or a state state institution. Uh, then maybe you've had to take these kinds of ethics courses before. Um, I'm a New Jersey institution, uh, sorry, uh, an NJIT employee, which makes me a New Jersey State employee. And New Jersey State has a yearly ethics requirement where um, we have to uh, sit through this ethics training session. It takes an hour or, or two. Uh, and, and we go through some slides. We watch a couple of videos. And then we take a quiz at the end to show that we've been paying attention. Um, if you've uh, held a job in an institution like this, um, you, you probably have uh, taken this kind of ethics uh, training before. Um, you, you, you might know that it's not really all that interesting. Um, uh, maybe some of the issues are important, but the presentation is usually pretty dry and formal. Uh, the point is just to get the policy information across to you. Um, you. You don't really enter into that kind of ethics training uh, expecting to learn a lot or expecting to be sort of intellectually challenged in any serious way. Um, so uh, s students who have background with this kind of uh, ethics training uh, might also have pretty low expectations for this course. Um, and, and besides, uh, a lot of students uh, say at the start of class, um, uh, you, can't, you can't really teach ethics. Ethics is something personal and it's private. It's, it's something that you, you know about your about your, uh, your family or your uh, um, religious or spiritual beliefs or you know, maybe your uh, background. Um, and so th that kind of stuff, you're not going to learn from a college professor. 
So uh, all of these things, I think, make students fairly skeptical coming into this class and uh, uh, mean students have fairly low expectations for this class. So let me sort of cle clear this up right off the bat. Um, this course is not meant to teach you about the difference between right and wrong. Um, I assume that we all did learn this when we were young. Um, um, I assume that we all have a well-developed sense of what's right and wrong. I'm not assuming that we're all perfect people. Uh, people make mistakes. Um, sometimes people do bad things. Um, uh, but but I, I assume that we're all uh, fairly competent at distinguishing between things that are clearly right and clearly wrong. Uh, moreover, I assume that we all have some interest in this distinction between right and wrong, that, that we're mostly interested in doing you know, good things and not doing bad things, um, that uh, we're not interested in creating um, you know, huge catastrophes or killing a lot of people. Uh, if, you, if you do have an interest in killing a lot of people, this is not, the, my class will not help you um, with that. Uh, uh, it's not the point of this class to dis dis dissuade people from causing massive harm to society. I assume that we're all adults and that we all have a general interest in building a, a, a safe and happy uh, society. Um, not that we're all perfect um, angels, but that um, we generally want to do right things and avoid doing wrong things as best we can. Um, so uh, it's not the goal of this class to teach you the difference between right and wrong. I assume you come into the class um, with that already sort of firmly embedded in your uh, in your life, and that you not only that you understand the difference between right and wrong, but that you make ethical decisions on a daily basis about what's the appropriate and inappropriate thing to do. Um, so. Uh, um, uh, it's also not the goal of this class to teach you about my views, my own personal ethical views, um, or the views of NGIT, or of New Jersey, or of the United States, um, or of your specific employer or career path. Um, I know that not every student in this class is uh, planning to be an engineer, um, or planning to be a licensed engineer. Um, a lot of students are coming from other majors, um, maybe even majors not related to engineering. Uh, so I'm not going to be giving you a lot of specific policies about particular career um, uh, uh, about particular career paths and the ethical constraints, um, or especially the legal constraints on uh, your career. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not trained to give legal advice, um, and so I won't be doing that in this class. Um, I should also maybe say that I'm not a practicing engineer. I've never worked as a practicing engineer. I, I have a degree, an, an engineering degree in computer science, um, but I've never uh, worked on a job site. Um, and what that means is that there's very limited information that I can give you uh, from personal experience. Um, most of my experiences that I'll talk about in class come from working in large institutions like NGIT and other um, uh, 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 universities. Um, but uh, but that aside, uh, it's not my goal to teach you what I think is right and wrong. Um, it's not my goal to teach you uh, any particular institutional's view, uh, institution's view of what's right and wrong, um, or to prepare you for the specific policies and regulations that you'll face um, as a professional. Uh, when you get a job, wherever you get a job, uh, you will get training that will tell you the specific regulations and policies that uh, uh, that um, that govern your your career um, and your workplace. Uh, so you'll get that training eventually. This course is not about giving you that training. Um, so what is this course? Well, this course is really designed just to uh, make space for you to think seriously about ethics and engineering and how these two are related, um, and especially how they will impact your, uh, your own professional life and your uh, career trajectory. Um, it's not often the case that professional uh, the professionals uh, get to sit around and think about ethics. Um, um, it's actually very rare. In fact, for a lot of you, this will be the only really dedicated time that you'll ever spend um, with your colleagues thinking seriously and openly about uh, ethics. Um, um, so I, the, my goal in the course is to take advantage of this opportunity, is to uh, give you as much space as possible to engage in the conversations and uh, and to engage the topics that uh, you think will be relevant to your career. Um, I want your uh, discussions here to, to be authentic. Uh, I want you to be as honest as you can. Um, I also want your learning to be self-motivated. Um, so I'm not going to give you a lot of writing prompts uh, to write to. Um, I want you to find your own things that you want to write about. Um, um, and uh, the nice thing about this opportunity here at NJIT is that almost nothing is on the line um, uh, except your grade. Um, but uh, we'll go over a lot of cases where people die, where, um, where lives are at risk, and in fact, maybe lots of lives are at risk, uh, and uh, wrong decisions can mean uh, deaths of um, lots of people. Um, uh, 
making those kinds of life or death decisions um, uh, uh, in the field when there's uh, professional pressure, when there's uh, may maybe uh, pressure from regulators and uh, government agencies, um, uh, making that kind of decision in that high pressure, high stakes environment uh, can be very, very difficult. And my goal in this class is to give you um, the opportunity to engage in some of this thinking, to sort of sort out your own thoughts about ethics, about your own values and commitments, um, where almost nothing is on the line, where no one's going to live or die based on what you, you say. Um, um, you're uh, you're, you're uh, free to speak your mind, and you're also free to sort of make mistakes. You know, uh, uh, try out positions that maybe you don't fully. Uh, aren't fully don't fully believe or aren't fully committed to but maybe you want to try out to see how people respond to it um, um, you know maybe this is an opportunity to question some of the uh, beliefs and values that you've uh, uh, left unquestioned for uh, for for a while um, and to do this where uh, where um, there's there's almost no dangers involved um, the, the biggest danger is m maybe you get a bad grade maybe you um, um, lose the respect of some of your peers by uh, uh, engaging the discussions in, in certain ways. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, that's a fairly um, low, uh, these are fairly low penalties. Um, and if this is the only 15 hours or you know, 15 credits that you're going to spend, um, engage in this sort of ethical reasoning and ethical debate. Uh, uh, it, uh, it's, it's good to have it here where there's nothing on the line. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so the assignments are all set up for you to engage um, in the uh, issues that interest you, for you to speak, speak out, and express yourself, um, to uh, uh, to express your own values and commitments, and uh, and how you see your own professional uh, the, the professional norms, um, uh, and not only to express your own views, but also to hear and engage with the views of others, um, to have genuine dialogue with your peers, where you're not deciding how to uh, finish any project, but you're just talking generally about your uh, ethics and values. Um, let me come back up here. So um, uh, I, I have the enormous privilege of being a professional philosopher where my, uh, my job every day is to sit and think um, with others about some of these uh, really abstract um, and uh, 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 deep and personal and um, important things like our values and our ethics, um, our, our, uh, our expectations from society and so on. Um, but, I, but I know it's a privilege and I know most people don't uh, get the chance to do this kind of uh, careful, uh, open-ended thinking um, very often. Um, I, I know a lot of students at NJIT uh, have most of their classes as you know physics and math classes where you're um, in a text, your nose is in a textbook uh, solving equations um, um, and uh, from that perspective, the capacity to sort of stand back and have these sort of big picture thoughts. Um, um, uh, it, it's not something that a lot of engineers get to do very often. Um, it's not something that you get to do in a structured um, environment like a classroom um, with, with someone to lead you through it. Um, and um, it, this might not be something you ever do again. Um, it's not, uh, Although maybe it's getting a little more common, it's not all that common to have big group ethics discussions like we'll, we will be having this semester. So I, I want to encourage you to take advantage of this privilege, um, to take advantage of the opportunities that this class provides. Um, I, I really do think that this class is, is one of those classes where the more work you put into it, the more effort uh, you put into it, and the more seriously you engage the material, the, the more value you, you'll get out of it. Um, it is admittedly pretty easy in this class to sort of skate by, do the minimal effort, and, and you know, um, get a decent grade. Um, it's not that hard, and I'm, I don't want this class to be a, a barrier to people graduating uh, in, in that way. Um, um, but I think that uh, the material is important, and, and I hope I can uh, demonstrate to you how important it is. Um, and I, I think that you'll appreciate, um, bo both for yourself and for uh, for your future selves, um, uh, that, you, that you'll appreciate the time that you spend with this class. Um, philosophy, ethics, um, is, is really just like math and any other thing that you want to learn, um, in the sense that you learn best by practicing. Uh, the, the philosophical discussions, some of the to topics and concepts that we're going to go over, um, 
you can learn them in the sense of like watching my lectures and, and uh, uh, taking down the notes. I'm not going to quiz you on any of this stuff. You don't have to memorize terms or dates or anything like that. Um, but uh, uh, watching me tell you about these issues is a lot different from engaging the issues yourself and talking about it with others. So I strongly, so just like math, learning math requires uh, uh, doing problems, doing practice problems, and practicing over and over again until it, um, until and, and, until you've learned. Uh, same thing with ethics. Um, you need to practice ethics, practice talking about it in the assignments on Canvas, um, but also just talk about it with your friends and your family, um, sitting around the table. Uh, maybe mention some of the cases and see what people think. Um, um, I think that kind of practice, just talking about it. Um, again, this is not completing the assignments, but just sort of engaging the material. Um, um, absorbing the material um, and, and talking about it with others. I think that's the kind of practice that will really um, help you uh, uh, gain a deeper appreciation of the material that we'll be covering. Um, so take advantage of it. Um, don't waste this opportunity. Um, time is short. Uh, we only live once and so on. Um, okay. Uh, let, me, let me move on here. Um, okay, so that was my um, sort of introduction to the so spirit of the course, let me get a little bit more detailed about the actual mechanics of the course. So there are 15 lessons um, in the semester. That means 15, there's 15 weeks in the semester, so there's 15 lessons. Uh, we'll have one lesson due every week. Um, the lessons mostly consist of um, um, uh, lectures and slides that I've prepared um, and that are on Canvas. Um, and then uh, my lectures and slides are really just an introduction to the reading material for that lesson. So there's, there'll be a bunch of readings, uh, articles, um, um, websites, sometimes uh, videos, um, and other kinds of lesson materials, uh, uh, comics, and, um, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and so your job is to watch the lecture, um, um, go through the slides, um, in order to uh, cover the reading material for that lesson. Um, there's, I will typically give a lot of material for every lesson, um, way more than you're expected to master. Um, six or seven articles per lesson. Uh, you should not feel obligated to read all of those articles, um, or even most of them. Um, and you should, you should certainly not feel obligated to write about all of the material. Uh, what I want you to do is find something in that material, something along the themes of that lesson, uh, and um, explore those things that you're interested in, in in greater detail. So if there's one article that you really like, or two articles that you want to play off of each other, um, and you can completely ignore the rest of the material, um, um, I'll, I'll get into this a little bit more, a little more detail. But uh, your job is to watch my lectures, go through the material, and then write a post and reply for every lesson. Um, these posts and replies are posted on Canvas, um, in, in the discussion forums on Canvas, uh, and that's the major assignment that you have every week: posts and replies. I think it's uh, it's one post and two replies. Um, also, at the end, uh, after the replies are due, I'm asking that you take all of this and you put it in the weekly plagiarism check, so I can uh, submit it to Turnitin and uh, uh, make sure that people aren't uh, submitting other people's assignments. Um, so that's most of the lesson, and I'll uh, talk a little bit about the grading in a second, so you can see how the points break down. But um, in addition to the weekly posts and replies, there are also a few uh, special assignments. Uh, so the post and reply requirement is fairly minimal. But I want you to pick three of the lessons, any three during the semester, um, except for the research project lessons. Um, uh, take any three of the lessons and write uh, longer posts. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about these extended posts in a second. Um, so uh, three times a semester, you're doing these extended posts um, on lessons of your choosing. Um, in lessons 10 and 11, there's a special project. Uh, we're going to do an independent research project where you pick a real historical case and do a, a, a research project on that case. Um, this uh, research project will take places, place over lessons 10 and 11, so over weeks 10 and 11. Uh, and the grading for that and the assignment uh, requirements are a little bit different. I'll talk about this in a bit. Um, I'm also asking every student to do two presentations this semester, and I'll show you what the presentation schedule looks like. Um, I want uh, one presentation to be on one of the lessons. So again, there's 15 lessons during the semester. Um, pick one of the lessons, something that you're interested in, um, and then uh, sign up on Canvas to present, uh, to do a little presentation of that, uh, of that lesson's material. Um, uh, some of the material that you'll cover in the lesson might um, rehearse some of the things I say in the lecture and the slides, but you can also do, uh, uh, bring in other material, do sort of independent research, or just say your own thoughts on some of the cases and uh, some of the issues that we cover. Um, 
So I want everyone to do one presentation on one of the lessons, and then the second presentation is going to be on your research project. So everyone is picking their own case study to do a little research, uh, to do a, a report on, and uh, I want you to do a short five-minute presentation on your research project also. Um, I'll talk more about these presentations in just a second. Um, and then finally, uh, in the final lesson for lesson 15, uh, we're going to do something called an ethics report, where I want you to write a ref reflection essay on the work that you've done this semester. So going back over your previous posts and replies and uh, talking about your own work. Um, so uh, I'm going to explain all of this in a little bit more detail going forward, but this is basically the breakdown of the assignment structure for this semester. Um, and I tell students that you should estimate about five hours per week to prepare your lesson. So that's five hours uh, for both watching the lecture and going through the slides, for reading material, and then for preparing your own posts and replies. Um, five hours a week um, is uh, not a whole lot, but it's important that you put that uh, time aside. If you try to do your posts and replies in the 30 minutes before the assignments are due, it's going to be pretty obvious from your work that this is not a, a very high quality or very high effort material. So uh, put aside the time, um, do the work, uh, take advantage of this opportunity. Um, all right, so let me let me do a little bit more detail about the assignments themselves. So the, again, the big assignment is these discussion forum uh, posts and replies. Uh, when I say a post, I mean about a 300-word essay. Um, in in the past, this essay requirement was was higher, but I've reduced it this semester, um, and I think this this will be good for the discussion. So a 300-word essay, 300 words is about a page long of uh, uh, typed, double-spaced, and standard font um, in, in like a Microsoft Word. 300 words is about a page, uh, and I want you to copy and paste that 300 words into the directly into the discussion forum online. Um, if you don't like writing or you like uh, doing video or audio essays, uh, you also have the option of instead of writing a es uh, written essay, you can do a um, audio or video essay. You can just record an audio thing like a podcast, or you can do a, a video with slides and a presentation. Um, and the grading for um, audio and video essays will be the exact same as the written essays. Um, the, requ the length requirement here is three minutes instead of 300 words. So just a, a quick three-minute video for your weekly post. Um, put it on YouTube with your NJIT account, and then uh, put a link to the YouTube in the, disc uh, in the discussion forum on Canvas, um, and you'll get credit for that. Um, as I said earlier, uh, there's no writing prompts for the discussion forum. Um, I'm not raising questions that you have to answer. You can really talk about any of the material that you want uh, there's a lot of material to, to uh, sort through, and I, I really want you to find something that um, you're interested in. Uh, I, I said this earlier, but not, not every student in class is an engineering major. Um, there's some uh, uh, bio, biomedical students or biology majors. There's um, um, architecture students. So uh, don't feel obligated to only talk about the engineering dimensions. Um, I really want you to tailor the material in your writing assignments to, um, uh, to be relevant to your own, um, to your own, to your own life, to, to your values, to your career path. So, so make, make the assignments about you. Okay. So uh, these discussion forum posts are due on Fridays at midnight um, on Canvas. Uh, so there's a, um, a, a deadline for these. These are posted, posted uh, every Friday. So uh, Friday at 11.59 p.m. Um, before Saturday morning at 12, 12 a.m. Uh, so uh, I, I have my assignments due on Friday night because I wanted to give you the weekend to do... Uh, you know, for, for self-care and for personal things, um, um, but but of course you can if you if you need to work wait weekends that's fine. It just means you have to work sort of uh, ahead of the schedule instead of behind it. Um, and uh, these weekly posts are worth thirty points per lesson. Um, the other thirty points for your weekly discussion forum are in your replies. I'm asking that you do two replies of about one hundred fifty words each, so about half the length of a post. One hundred fifty words is about a paragraph, um, uh, and um, I, I'd like you to, to reply to other students' posts and to try to uh, sincerely engage some of the discussion. If someone replies to your post and you want to reply to them, that reply would count for the discussion forum. But remember, the point of this assignment is to engage the views of others. So if you're uh, only ever responding to people who respond to you, then maybe you're not um, fully engaging the, the scope of the assignment. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I'm not going to be too picky about it. Um, but... Uh, 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 so the post is due on Friday, and your replies are due the following Tuesday, so Tuesday at midnight. Um, with the replies, uh, when the replies are due, I want you to also submit this all to the plagiarism detection, and I'll talk about that in just a bit. But the post is worth 30 points, and the replies are each worth 15 points, so combined they're worth 30 points, so that's 60 points for your discussion forum. 
Um, and, and here's the rubric that I use for uh, grading the discussion forum. Um, if it's uh, if you meet the minimum requirements um, of 300 words on some important lesson topic, you're going to get all 30 points for the post and for the replies. Um, you'll lose points if you're late, if you're well under the word count, or if you're sort of not engaged uh, that deeply with the um, lesson themes. Um, uh, assignments that are clearly rushed right before the deadline uh, tend to f tend to fall in this uh, group also. Um, same thing for replies. Uh, th this is based on how much you're engaged and you know whether you're you're late or not. Um, so these rubrics are all on Canvas. You can see them directly uh, when I when I grade them. Um, hopefully this all makes sense. Um, I used to have a more elaborate grading scheme for a longer essay on each one of these assignments, and I've cut down the word count, and I've also cut down the grading policy, so it's very minimal. Um, uh, instead, there's going to be another uh, grading with the ethics report at the end of the semester, and I'll talk about that in a second. But um, uh, I just mentioned a few minutes ago that um, when you turn in your replies on Tuesday, that Tuesday also is due your plagiarism check. So by plagiarism check, what I'd like you to do is take your post and your replies, all the replies that you submit for that week, um, and put them in a, a single Word document, uh, a, a .doc or .docx. Um, you, can do, you can do it in Google Docs and then just download the file. Um, but then I want you to submit that file uh, on, on Canvas to the plagiarism uh, check assignment. Um, this plagiarism check assignment is due at the same time that the replies are due, um, which is 11.59 on Tuesday. Um, uh, um, and and uh, you must submit the plagiarism check in order to get credit on the assignment. If you submit an assignment but you don't submit the plagiarism check, then you won't get credit on that assignment. Um, but uh, it's important that you submit your post and replies directly to the discussion forum because it's the discussion forum that's getting the grades. Uh, the plagiarism check is just uh, a, a binary yes or no, did you actually submit the plagiarism check? Um, uh, plagiarism, I'll talk about plagiarism in just a second, uh, what exactly I mean by plagiarism, but um, let me go through the rest of the assignments real quickly. Uh, so I mentioned earlier the extended posts. So uh, instead of making you write a 700-word uh, post for every single uh, lesson. Um, I'm making you only write 300 word posts for, for each lesson, but if there's some lesson that has some um, topic or uh, material that you're particularly interested in and want to write a lot about, then on three of these lessons, uh, except for the research projects, um, I want you to uh, write an extended post, which is just a, a, a more effort, greater effort post. So instead of writing 300 words, I want you to write 700 words or seven minutes of video. Um, and in these extended posts, you should aim at doing deeper critical analysis, more careful a discussion of the concepts, the themes, the theories. Um, maybe do some independent scholarship, uh, independent research, bringing in other sources outside of our, our, the assigned reading list. Um, give more thorough um, introspective uh, discussion. Um, talk more, more deeply about your own views or maybe experiences that you've had, maybe uh, workplace experiences. Um, and, and in general, just uh, put more effort into the writing. Do some edits, do some drafting. Um, make sure that the writing is uh, uh, well presented. Um, things like pictures and graphs and so on are also uh, good for this kind of extended post. Um, so uh, this is just a, a more effort post. Um, when you turn it in during the during the week, I'm going to grade it the same way that I grade any other post. But what I want you to do is collect your three best posts for the semester, so the three extended posts that you wrote, um, along with your research project report and any other uh, writing samples from the semester that you think reflect well on your uh, on your writing, on what you've learned in the class, if you think they're good expressions of your views, and so on. So I want you to sort of collect all that during the semester, and then uh, in Lesson 15, the final lesson of the class, I want you to put all that into what I'm calling an ethics report. Um, so just basically a big document that has all your, all your best writing from the semester. And then I want you to put at the front of that document uh, a, uh, a reflection essay, where you reflect on all the work that you did this semester, what you've learned, why it matters, how you expect it to impact your future career, um, this kind of thing. Um, and, and put all of that in the document, and oops, sorry, um, and uh, that'll be the final assignment for the semester. So uh, I won't grade the extended posts any differently during the semester, but these extended posts also get submitted for the ethics report, and I'm going to give it a more careful grading during the ethics report. So your extended posts will get graded twice, essentially, and this is how they're worth more. Um, they're, wor they're worth part of the ethics report assignment. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, fi finally, uh, no, I guess not. Yeah, yeah. So, so fi finally, the presentations. Um, uh, so I, uh, there are two presentations that you're required to do this semester. Um, 
uh, you can see the schedule on Canvas. Um, I want you to sign up on Canvas as soon as possible. I think by the 22nd, I, I believe I said in the syllabus uh, for the spring semester. Um, uh, so so uh, sign up as soon as you can because uh, there's a little bit of coordination that needs to happen for these presentations. Um, um, and remember, there's two presentations. So the first presentation is the lesson presentation, and the second presentation is the research presentation. So for the lesson presentation, we'll be attached to one of the uh, weekly lessons. So um, um, pick one of the lessons, maybe a lesson that is covering material that you'll be interested in talking about. Um, and then I want you to prepare a 10 minute or so um, uh, presentation uh, on, on some of that material. Um, again, this presentation will cover some of the material that I also covered in lecture. Um, you can try to cover material outside of it. You can give your own original thoughts on you know, what I present in lecture. Um, you can do original research um, and pull together some new information. Um, uh, uh, the presentation can be sort of uh, uh, on, on anything you want related to that, that, that lesson's themes. Um, it should be about 10 minutes and maybe a couple minutes after for a Q&A. Uh, try not to go too far over 10 minutes so we can fit out a bunch of presentations in. Um, uh, you're only doing this for one of the lessons, so you're not doing it for every lesson. Uh, so basically, every student gets gets one of the lessons, um, and uh, use your presentation time to uh, talk with class about um, issues that you think are important, issues that you think deserve uh, uh, more consideration um, and some some discussion in our uh, uh, live meeting sessions. Um, draw connections across the lessons. Um, um, talk about your own goals and values, talk about your own personal experiences. Um, there's a sort of a lot of latitude about what you do in these lesson presentations. Um, and the lesson presentations can also be done in groups. So let me actually get out of this uh, um, slide deck and uh, come over here to the... Um, so this is the presentation schedule on Canvas. If you go to the... Uh, this is what our class looks like on Canvas. I'm um, in here in the presentation module. When you're looking at Canvas, make sure you're looking at the module view. Make sure you're clicking on modules and looking at the modules view, not just the assignments, but the modules, because they're organized by modules. And in the presentation modules, this has the schedule. I'll also put all my recordings here, and this is for grading. Um, so if you click on this presentation schedule, you'll get taken to this document, um, which you should have editing access to. Um, and then you have, uh, here, here's the big schedule. So every one of these are days uh, that uh, there might be a presentation, and if you want to present on that day for that lesson, just put your name um, uh, under your appropriate section number. So I'm teaching three sections this semester. I'm teaching section 002, section 452, and 454. Um, so uh, the presentation that you want to do, just figure out what lesson you want to present in, what day you want to present, um, and then put your name under your section number. Um, and then hopefully we all fill this out. Um, there are, I believe, 12 days to present. There's no presentations for lesson 15, um, and there's only one presentation for the first lesson, uh, and then there's no uh, lesson presentations for the research projects. Um, so that leaves 12, uh, 12 lessons, um, slightly less than double that of, uh, of, uh, of days to meet. Um, so I'm teaching three sections, uh, and uh, only one of those sections actually has a designated meeting time. This is section 002, which is scheduled uh, to meet Mondays and Thursdays from 11 to 12.20. So this is uh, our official presentation meeting time. Um, every Monday and Thursday from 11 to 12.20, I will be meeting and uh, ho holding these presentations online. Um, students from all the sections are welcome to attend this Monday through Thursday, Monday to Thursday uh, uh, meeting, meeting slot. My other two sections, section 452 and 454, these are both online only sections. And the students who signed up for these two sections did not schedule Monday, Thursday, 11 to 12, 20 as part of their regular, uh, as, as part of their semester schedule. Um, I understand that. Um, and I'm not expecting uh, students in these sections to show up to this meeting. Uh, it's not required. Um, I'm not going to uh, mark you down for not attending these meetings. Um, this is just the time that we're gonna be presenting. So if you can show up to this time to present, that's great, that's fine, we'll all we'll be there presenting. Um, if you cannot show up to this time, that's also fine. Uh, what I'd like you to do is just pre-record your presentation. And when we do meet, I will play the, pre I'll play the recordings that I have first, and then I'll uh, go to the presentations of people who are actually, uh, actually there in the, in the WebEx. Um, and, uh, and then we'll have some open discussion after that. So even the students that are online only, 
Um, I want you to sign up for this schedule. Again, do not expect that you're required to meet at 11, from 11 to 12 on Monday and Thursday. I know that you did not plan to have that as a meeting time. Um, if that's not a convenient time for you, it's fine. Just uh, pre-record your presentations and I'll just present them at that time. Um, uh, I will record every one of our sessions from Monday to th uh, uh, on Monday and Thursday from 11 to 12:20, and I'll put the recordings on Canvas so you can watch anything that happens. Um, if that's the day that you're presenting and you can't make it, you can watch the video afterwards to see what questions and comments people had um, afterwards. Um, um, but every Monday and Thursday we're going to be meeting. So, so these uh, these meeting times on the 20th, the 25th, the 28th, and so on. Um, these are Monday and Thursday meeting times. We'll, we'll be meeting 11 uh, to 12:20. Um, uh, again, if you're online only, still sign up for one of the lessons, still sign up for one of the days, and if you can't make that meeting time, just pre-record it and send me the send me the video when, when you have it done. Uh, I'm, I'm asking that if you're pre-recording, make sure that you send me the video before class starts at, at 10 o'clock or at 11 o'clock on Monday and Thursday. Um, um, so with that said, uh, uh, I believe there's enough uh, presentation slots here for every um, for every section to have two presentation slots. So for instance, if I'm presenting on the 28th, uh, there can be one other person um, uh, also presenting on the 28th from my section. And uh, there can be um, people from the other sections also. Um, here, here, uh, and, and uh, here, here, and here, here. So, um, so, uh, I would like you to uh, not schedule more than two students per section for each one of these presentation days. So if there's already two people from your section, pick one of the other lessons or one of the other presentation days. Um, and that way we will have at most six students per presentation day and hopefully six students presenting. If each student presents on their own uh, for 10 minutes, that's about an hour and that still leaves us 20 minutes for discussion and that's about right. Um, a uh, couple of important things, though. Uh, so, so imagine that these are the six people, me and Jane, and then these four people uh, are all presenting on the on the twenty eighth. Um, this can be six individual presentations where they're all presenting individually and ind independently. That's fine, um, but they can also group up, and you can group up however you want. So, uh, if if me and Jane want to present together, and everyone else wants to go individually, that's fine. Or if I want to present with this person as like a group um, and everyone else presents individually, that's also fine. Um, you don't need to just stick with group partners in your own section. Um, you can have group partners uh, from the other sections on the same day, um, what's ever convenient to, to, uh, uh, to you and your group. Um, what this means is that I, I need everyone, so I need everyone to schedule themselves as soon as possible so that everyone knows who else is presenting on the same day so those people can all get in contact with each other um, to coordinate how you want to do it. And again, if you want to work in, in groups, uh, small groups or big groups, um, any way you want to divide yourselves up, uh, that's fine. Um, if you want to work independently, um, and uh, some people want, some people want to work in a group and some people want to work independently, that's fine. Divide up the material. Just make sure everyone knows um, who's covering what material, um, and uh, and and work amongst yourselves to sort of sort that out. And then you can do the presentations however you want it. Um, so uh, so in, in order to coordinate all this, I'm asking that everyone uh, get get your names on the schedule as soon as possible. Um, and uh, hopefully this works all, all works out. Um, I have never, this is the first semester that I've tried to coordinate activities across different sections. Um, I've never had to do this before. I don't know if it's actually going to work, but hopefully, hopefully it'll work. Uh, we'll see. Um, good luck. Uh, okay. So th this is the lesson presentations. Remember, everyone's signing up for one of the lessons to present. We also have uh, research presentations. Um, Oh, I should share this again. That's not what I want to present this. Here we go. Uh, so in addition to the lesson presentation, there's also a research presentation. Um, and this research presentation goes along with the research project in lessons 10 and 11. Um, uh, so let me just talk about the project really quickly, and then I'll go back to the presentation. For, the, for your research project, I want you to pick some historical case study, some real world case, not a hypothetical case, but a real world case, um, something after World War II, because the pre-World War II stuff tends to be um, um, sort of not really suited to the modern engineering context. Um, but pick some real historical case, some something related to your own uh, career path, and uh, do an independent study on it. Um, do some research, do some real library research, 
uh, and find some good sources on what happened. Um, and I want you to write a report uh, on Canvas um, on, on your case. Um, and I'm dividing this report up into two parts. So in lesson 10, I want you to do a review of the case itself. This is sort of like a fact-finding mission. You know, what happened, who was involved, what were the consequences, um, you know, what were the, um, um, uh, you know, if, if there were uh, legal battles afterwards, what were the results of those legal battles and so on. Uh, in lesson 10, I really just want you to lay out the facts of the case so that we understand what the case is about. And then in lesson 11, I want you to uh, go over go over that case again and give it an ethical analysis. So not just go over the facts, but sort of what do you, what do you take from um, this lesson? Um, you know, who, who was responsible? How should we hold them responsible? What can we do to prevent this ethical uh, uh, situation from happening again? Um, um, research projects can be a lot of fun. Um, sometimes they talk about some grim subjects, um, some, uh, some disasters where lots of people die and so on. Uh, engineering ethics can tend to be a disasters class where we just go over these major engineering disasters and what went wrong and how to uh, prevent them from happening in the future. And uh, uh, lessons 10 and 11, this research project is your chance to bring your own cases, uh, cases that you're interested in um, into the discussion. So I'll give you a bunch of my own case studies, but lessons 10 and 11 will get case studies from all, uh, all the students. Um, I, I want this to be partly a research project, so I don't want you to just um, use Wikipedia. I want you to actually track down some scholarly sources, um, some primary sources, and uh, you use them to inform your um, your, your analysis. Uh, I'm asking for at least four scholarly sources for this project over the course of both uh, lessons 10 and 11, and I want you to put those scholarly sources into an annotated bibliography where you give them a full, uh, full cit citation, and you also give them a little annotation where you explain um, how you use that source. So I want these research projects to be longer than the normal post length. So these are 700 word posts. Um, so 1400, 700 words for each one of the parts of the uh, report. So 1400 words for the entire report. And they'll also be graded more than a normal post. So they're worth under 25 points each. Um, that includes the, uh, the replies and the annotated bibliography. This is a 250 point project. Um, it's a pretty big chunk of your grade. So make sure you take it seriously. This is coming in lessons 10 and 11, and I'll give you plenty of warning uh, before, uh, before that, uh, that time comes. Um, in addition to pre preparing your report and posting it on Canvas, I'm also asking that you do um, another presentation. This, this is a presentation separate from your lesson presentation. This is your research presentation. Um, that's, uh, it should be a short presentation of about five minutes. Um, so this, I don't want you to go into too much detail. This is really just um, putting your case on the table, making sure that we know what the case is about, saying a few things about the ethics. Um, but this is just really a, a really short pitch about your um, your, uh, your your case study. Uh, you can direct people to your report for more information. Um, and let me just quickly go back to the um, presentation schedule. So this schedule right here is for the lesson uh, lesson presentations. Um, and then down here at the bottom, uh, this is on page four of the document, you can go down, and this is the research uh, project schedule. So for the research projects, we're only doing this in lessons 10 and 11, um, which gives us four days on the normal schedule, but um, uh, on, on Monday and Thursday from 11 to 12, 20. Um, but, but just those four days, I don't think is enough for everyone to do these research projects. So I'm actually scheduling uh, an additional day for these two weeks, for weeks 10 and 11. We're gonna be meeting on Monday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, so if you can't make the Monday or Thursday meeting, um, try to make the Friday meeting. Um, again, for both this and the lesson, uh, for both the research presentation and the lesson presentation, uh, you're, you're perfectly um, um, allowed to pre-record your presentation um, and just send me a recording. If you can't make any of these days or, or times, um, that's, that's fine. Just send me a recording beforehand and I'll, and I'll play your presentation during the day that you sign up for on the schedule. So even if you can't make the time, please sign up in the schedule for both the research and the lesson presentation. Um, it's really important that we do that soon so we can get uh, going on the rest of the material. Okay, almost done here. Um, that was the research project presentation. Uh, here's the total grading scheme with all of that. So um, all, all those, so typical lessons were 60 points, lessons 10 and 11 were 125 points each. And so this is how the whole thing breaks down. There's an introduction assignment that's, that's due this week um, and then there are 12 regular discussions worth 720 points. There's two research projects, um, 125 points each, 250 points total. Um, and then your presentations are worth 250 points total, and your ethics report is worth 100 points. So that makes 1,340 points total. Um, 
of, of requirements for the assignment uh, for the semester. Um, and here's the grading scale for this. You can see that I'm using a slightly uh, bumped down grading scale. So the minimum A is 90%, the minimum B plus is 85%, the minimum B is 80%, the minimum C plus is 75%, the minimum C is 65%, and the minimum D is 50%. So uh, again, it's not so difficult to pass the class. If you complete half the work, you can pass the class. Um, but uh, getting uh, 90, getting an A is going to be a little bit more difficult. You have to be on top of the assignments uh, pretty regularly. You can't miss too many assignments in order to get that uh, A. Um, but there is uh, there is extra credit. I will talk about the extra credit in a second, but let me first talk about the late policy. So um, remember that posts are due on Fridays and replies are due the following Tuesday. Uh, if you miss that assignment deadline, um, you have a week to turn it in um, uh, with a late penalty. So the late penalty is 10 points off the posts and 5 points off the replies. So if you, uh, the posts are due on Friday, so if you turn in the post on Monday, uh, the Monday after that, uh, after it was due, that's still fine, you'll still get credit, you'll just get uh, a maximum of 20 out of 30 points. Or if your replies are, are, due, are, are turned in late, you'll get a maximum of 10 out of 15 points. Um, this late penalty period only lasts for a, a week, so uh, in, until the next uh, lesson assignment. So uh, I turn my post in on Friday, uh, if, if I miss the deadline on Friday, then I have until the next Friday to turn in my post and uh, and get this late penalty. Um, same thing with replies. If I miss my replies due on Tuesday, then I have until the following Tuesday to turn in my replies for the late with the late penalty. Um, but that late penalty only lasts a week. Um, after a week is up, that uh, late uh, grace period is over, and you can no longer turn in post or replies. Um, on Canvas, the assignment is actually shut down, so you can't uh, submit any more assignments after one week. Um, so uh, yes, turn in late material, but don't expect to be able to turn in material after uh, a, a week because uh, you, you won't be able to. Um, the assignments are due at midnight, um, but I have like a th roughly 30 minute grace period. If you turn it in at 12.15, I'm not gonna mark you late. If you're turning it in at, at, at uh, 8 a.m. the next day, that's, that's late. Um, so don't push this too hard. Uh, 30 minutes is just a grace period. Um, if it's right around 30 minutes, it's probably going to be fine. But if it's several hours afterwards, it probably won't be fine. Uh, and then and then the late penalty kicks in. Um, the easiest way to uh, not get an A in this class is not by doing bad work, but it's just by uh, not doing the work on time. If you if you miss a couple of assignments and turn in a couple of other assignments late, uh, that's probably enough to knock you down from a from an A to a B or a B plus. So uh, it's important because this is a discussion based class. It's important that we're all um, on the same material, talking about it at the same time. So this is why the late policy is a little bit strict. Um, but there are, are exceptions to the late policy. Um, so uh, the late policy is just if you if you forgot if you missed the deadline, you have a week to turn turn it in. Um, but there's all sorts of reasons why you might um, miss that deadline for legitimate reasons. Um, the late policy in the syllabus talks about two different kinds of exceptions to the late policy. Um, one is for planned events. So um, uh, people who are in the National Guard and have to uh, get, get called up for National Guard duty, or if you're going to an academic conference, or if there's some other thing that's coming up that you know is coming up, uh, you know, finals are coming up and you know that it's, it's going to be really hard, or midterms are coming up and you know that you've got to do a lot of studying for midterms, and maybe you're going to have to miss an assignment. Um, if you know that that's happening, you know it in advance, um, let me know ahead of time, and uh, I will give uh, an extension. Um, it's important that you let me know ahead of time uh, this this should be for planned events. This should not be for last minute events. So right. So if you, if it's setting for the midterm, you know that midterm is coming for um, weeks before the actual midterm. So you should not be asking me a few hours before your assignments are due if you can have an extension. So I, I asked for 48 hours before a deadline. Um, this is just to make sure that we're talking about planned events. Um, uh, I'm not going to grant extensions for planned events within 48 hours of a deadline. Um, so if you're anticipating that there's going to be some issue, let me know ahead of time, and I'm happy to grant you an extension. Um, but don't let me know at the last minute. Uh, part, part of your responsibility here is to is to um, plan these things out responsibly. Um, um, but I also know that it's not always possible to plan things out. Emergencies happen. Um, life doesn't happen on a semester schedule. Um, so um, if there are uh, hospital emergencies, um, especially in COVID, uh, period, um, these kinds of emergencies uh, come up and they're understandable and I, I don't want to penalize you for having to deal with um, life. Uh, so if, if these things come up um, and you're not able to let me know ahead of time, 
um, that's fine. Uh, uh, what I ask, what I'm asking students to do is to fill out this student concern form, which goes to the Dean of Students. Um, you can fill it out yourself. You can ask me to fill it out for you if you like. Um, the student concern form, it's not, uh, it's not to penalize you or punish you in any way. This is just to let the Dean of Students know that you have an emergency situation. Um, it's often the case that the Dean of Students can help coordinate, not just with me, but with all of your instructors to make sure that you're being taken care of. The Dean of Students also has re uh, access to lots of resources and uh, support uh, uh, resources to support students, whatever you're going through, if it's a hospital thing or if it's a, a family emergency or if it's a, a mental health emergency. Um, the Dean of Students can direct you to uh, places where you can be supported, uh, can make sure that you're being taken care of. Um, the Dean of Students is really uh, much, much more much better equipped to handle these kinds of emergencies and crises uh, than I am. Um, so uh, both to protect your privacy and to make sure that you're being taken care of as a student, like this is what the Dean of Students is there for, is to, is to, um, is to serve the students of NGIT. So take advantage of this. Um, the student concern form is very short and it'll just, it'll send uh, an email directly to the Dean and the Dean will get in contact with you um, to arrange a meeting or just to figure out what you need. Uh, after you talk with the Dean, if you need uh, um, if you need excuses on some assignments that you missed, just let the dean know. The dean will send me directly a, a, an email explaining um, the situation and explaining that uh, you need an excuse for certain absences. And when I get the email from the dean, um, I'll take off any late penalties I've, I've assigned. Um, um, I, again, getting in contact with the dean is not to punish you; it's just to make sure that you're being supported. Um, uh, Sometimes emergencies happen and you're not allowed, and you're not able to talk to the d dean until much later. If you want to get in contact with me, that's fine, but I'm going to uh, encourage you to talk to the dean. Sorry, excuse me. Um, I'm going to encourage you to talk to the dean also. Um, um, but uh, if this is a, if this is a situa situation you're in, um, and uh, in addition to talking to the dean, just go ahead and start completing the work. Um, I might apply late, late penalties when I go through the grading, but once I hear from the dean afterwards, I'll take off any late penalties and I'll give you credit for the assignment. Um, um, if you know that you're going to have a legitimate excuse for those assignments, um, um, then you can start working on them uh, when you're able to, and I'll accept them, uh, no matter how long it is after the deadline. Um, um, let me stress that I want to be flexible um, with pandemic situation. Um, with the political unrest in the country. Um, it's, it's not very easy to be stu a student right now. Um, I used to have much stricter policies about late work and about, um, and about uh, uh, exceptions, to, uh, exceptions to deadlines and so on. But I, I really want to be as flexible as I can be um, uh, to make sure that students are able to engage the class um, and do their best work. Um, if you're having any accessibility issues, if you're having any uh, if you're struggling with the material for any reason at all, uh, get in contact with me and I'm happy to talk about it with you and, and work something out to make sure that you're able to um, continue uh, doing good work in class. Um, so uh, I, I, re I really do want to be flexible. P please don't hesitate to reach out. The best way of reaching out to me is um, through Discord. And I don't know, I guess I haven't uh, mentioned this yet, but I, uh, I have a Discord, uh, a ch uh, Discord server that I use for all of my classes. Um, I will be coordinating um, ass assignments. I'll be coordinating the daily, uh, the, the weekly meeting times, um, and doing other things. Sometimes we play Among Us in, in the Discord. So uh, I strongly recommend everyone get into the Discord. And uh, 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 Discord sort of works like my virtual office hours. So if you have any questions, I'm usually available in the Discord to, to chat with you. Um, there's a few other policies here. Uh, I guess I can go over just very, very quickly. Um, um, cita citation policy. So uh, I will have slightly uh, stricter policies for the research project um, in lessons 10 and 11, but for the weekly posts and replies, uh, the citation policy is just make sure that you're citing work that's not your own. Um, if you're citing material from the readings, um, it's enough to put a, um, a name, maybe a page number if, if it's available, um, in order to point your readers to the source that you're getting that from. Um, if this is material that, that I've provided in the lesson readings, if it's material that you've taken from your own research, um, from online or from the library or whatever, um, then you might want to uh, do a full citation. And by a full citation, I just mean all the information you need to track down that source. Right? So the, the whole the point of citations in academic work um, 
uh, is to give credit to the author and to help readers track down that source. So if I'm reading some something and they give a citation uh, and I might be interested in reading um, where they're getting their information, uh, the citation should have enough information so that I can track down where that source is um, and maybe acquire it. So like the best way of doing this, if it's an online source, is just providing a link. Um, if you provide a link at the end of your uh, at the end of your posts, that's that's great. That's helpful. Um, if it's uh, something that I can't access from online, if it's a book that you're reading or some other um, information that you have access to, you might want to provide more information. Uh, like the minimal stuff for a uh, citation is the author name, the year it was published, the title of the piece, and where it was published. Um, the different styles, so, so I prefer APA style, which looks like this, author, and then year in parentheses, and then title and source. Um, but uh, there are other styles also um, that rearrange the same information into a different order. Um, I don't really care what style you use as long as you're consistent. Pick a style that you like and just use it consistently. Um, um, don't feel obligated to give full citations every time um, unless it's material that we'd, we wouldn't have access to otherwise. Um, providing links is the easiest thing you can do to, to help your readers. Um, these citation requirements will be a little bit uh, more strict for the annotated bibliography. Um, in particular for the scholarly sources that you're going to cite in your annotated bibliography. And I'll talk about that more when we get to the research presentation. Um, failure to do the citations properly sometimes results in plagiarism. Um, if you're not giving proper credit to your sources, this can count as plagiarism. Um, um, quoting uh, or copying and pasting uh, long sections from Wikipedia will count as plagiarism. Um, and it's always really egregious when people copy directly from Wikipedia in a way that also copies all the links um, in, a, in a paragraph from Wikipedia to other Wikipedia pages, and then it's very clear that it's plagiarism. Um, don't plagiarize in an ethics course. I'm not going to hesitate in um, penalizing people for plagiarism. Um, your words should be your own words, and if you're using someone else's words, it's, it's fine to quote other people. Um, the material that you quote from other people don't count against your word count, so you can't, you can't make the 300 words entirely through quotes. Um, um, if you're using a quote, make sure you put it in quotation marks and that you give the source and uh, the citation where you took that quote. Um, if you're altering any words, you still should give citations. Say what source you're taking it from that you're, that you're paraphrasing from. Um, it's really paraphrasing that is the biggest challenge for students in this class. Um, most of the time when I'm penalizing someone for um, uh, plagiarism, it's not its not because they did their citation wrong because they forgot a semicolon somewhere. That, that's not the kind of thing I, 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 I penalize for. Um, the real issue is about paraphrasing. So paraphrasing is when you take some passage and you um, restate it in different words. So um, um, this is a website that's linked to on the um, slide deck. It's also linked to in the syllabus. Um, and this is from the University of Wisconsin, I believe. Yeah, University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, where they talk about what paraphrasing is, and in particular, they talk about what makes successful and unsuccessful paraphrases. Um, so I'm not going to actually read this to you, but I just wanted to show you visually. So here's the original passage. Um, this is uh, something about nursing. Um, is a paragraph from this source here. So if this is the original passage in the original source. You can see there's a couple of uh, ellipses. So this isn't a, a fully direct quote, but this is taken taken from the original source. So this um, is what the uh, this website describes as word-for-word -word plagiarism. Um, all of the underlined passages here are directly copied and pasted from the original source. So critical care nurses have a hierarchy of roles. This is something um, is directly taken from the original source. Um, not everything is directly copied, right? So uh, some of the sentence structure, some of the phrases are slightly re rearranged. Um, the order in which some of these sentences are presented in this paragraph differs slightly from this paragraph over here. I mean, you can just see that this is a longer paragraph, so this isn't just copying and pasting that paragraph. This, they're making some changes, but these changes are all superficial, and the changes that they're making are really just rearranging and editing of the original passage. So um, obviously copying and pasting is plagiarism. Um, this kind of word-for-word -word paraphrase is also plagiarism. Um, uh, notice, by the way, that there is some... Uh, Oh, I guess not in here. Um, they don't. They don't even cite uh, Chase at all um, in the, in this passage. Um, so this is all taken from the original without at all indicating that this material is from the original. Um, so this is, this would count as plagiarism. I think it's pretty clear this is plagiarism given how much is taken from the original. I think what students really 
struggle with, though, is this, uh, what the website calls patchwork plagiarism. Um, here, if we're looking for the underlying passages, we can see a couple of uh, sentences, a couple of terms. And notice that in this patchwork paraphrase, there is even a direct citation of the original source. So in this passage, the source is cited, and uh, all, these uh, all these phrases are taken from the original, but it's not long blocks of text that are quoted. But here's the thing, this is still plagiarism. Uh, why? Well, because, first of all, because all of these um, key terms are, are um, directly cited from the original, um, and they don't need to be cited. They're not technical terms, they're just um, key concepts. But moreover, the structure and uh, presentation of this paragraph directly follows from the original. Um, the order in which the material is presented, the order in which the facts are presented uh, is the same. The points of each one of the sentences in this paraphrase mirror the points of each one of the sentences in the original passage. So basically what they did is they took, uh, uh, instead of copying and pasting and doing just some slight shifts, they really just did a sort of a sentence by sentence paraphrase. So this first sentence summarizes the first sentence of the original passage and the second sentence summarizes the second sentence and so on. This is still plagiarism. It's plagiarism because the work is still primarily in the original uh, writing sample. This is still a fairly superficial rewriting of that original work. And even though the original work is credited, um, that work is not credited with the structure and phrasing of the passage here. In other words, this passage is presented as the author's own writing when in fact the structure and presentation here is almost uh, entirely taken from the original source. The fact that it's not copying every word doesn't mean that this is not still significant uh, uh, paraphrase, uh, plagiarism. Here's the legitimate paraphrase on the website. Um, in this case, you can see that um, there are no underlying passages, so none of the phrases whatsoever are taken from the original. Um, moreover, the whole structure of this paragraph is changed up from the original. There's no, uh, it's, it's not just sort of uh, paraphrasing one sentence by one sentence. Um, there, there is one uh, uh, term that is quoted directly, and when it's quoted directly, it's put in quotes and the citation is given. So it's very clear that this phrase is from the original. Um, but apart from that one phrase, everything else in this, fa in this paragraph is, um, is new, is, is written from scratch. Um, it's often the case that when I call students on word-for-word -word plagiarism or patchwork pl uh, plagiarism, their response is that, well, how could I say it any other way? You know, this is a technical term. How could I have talked about this thing without using that specific technical term? This is a bad response. Um, this, is not, um, this is not a good response. And it's not a good response because, in, in fact, uh, copying, doing something like this patchwork paraphrase, is actually really, really hard to do if you're not taking directly from the original material. Right? The only way that you write uh, this kind of Patrick paraphrase is if you have the original source open right next to you and that you're writing a sentence directly based on the sentence that you're reading from the original source. Um, it's only the case that you can come up with this kind of direct paraphrase from that very close copying um, of the original. That's not how research should go. That's not how original writing should go. Um, e even when we're talking about technical things, it's very unlikely that... Um, your original writing will copy so much directly from the original in terms of structure and phrasing. Um, uh, and this is just because language is so generative. Um, if, you do the, if you do this correctly and you, you, know, you, you do the research, you read a bunch of papers, you compile your notes, um, and then you put all those papers aside and you write from your notes, from your own thoughts and ideas, um, then it's almost impossible to copy uh, so closely the original source. Um, uh, uh, because you're not going to form that exact same sentence structure when you write your own essay. Um, the only way that you form that same sentence structure is if you're copying directly from the original. So Patrick paraphrases are, are plagiarism. Um, if you want to avoid plagiarism, the way you avoid plagiarism is by putting the original material aside when you start writing. Um, if you don't have the original material open, you won't plagiarize. It's, it's really as simple as that. All right, I probably spent more time on that than I should have, but uh, that's important. Please don't plagiarize in my uh, ethics class. Um, if you are caught plagiarizing, uh, your assignment will be given zero credit, um, and you will also lose all of the extra credits that you could uh, uh, that you that you will uh, you, you learn the opportunity for any extra credits over the semester. So none of that extra credit will uh, go to you if you are found uh, plagiarizing. Um, if your case is particularly egregious, or if you plagiarize repeatedly, um, I will I will refer 
um, your case to the dean of students before they can make a review. Um, the dean of students is um, authorized to um, to remove people from courses and to even expel people from the university for egregious cases of plagiarism. Again, please don't plagiarize in my ethics class. All right, we're almost done. Um, there is extra credit, like I said. Uh, you won't get this extra credit if you plagiarize, but you're not going to do that. Um, there's a few different kinds of extra credit. There's a couple of uh, essays. Um, one of the essays is called uh, The Ethics of Your Field. So if you're not an, en an, uh, an engineering major or if you don't plan on becoming a professional engineer, you know, uh, what is your field and what are the unique ethical uh, constraints and requirements and considerations uh, for, for your field? So that's one of the essays. Um, the other essay is on the COVID pandemic. Um, so uh, I think it's called Ethics in a Global Crisis. Um, and it's really just asking you to reflect on your experiences over the last um, year, almost a year now, um, in the COVID pandemic about the official response, the, pol the politics over the last few months, um, um, anything like that. The, the second extra credit essay here is really just an opportunity for you to uh, talk about some of these um, issues uh, that maybe doesn't don't fit really well anywhere else in the in the class. Um, another extra credit opportunity, this is, these are not requirements, you do not have to complete any of these assignments, but one, uh, another extra credit opportunity are peer reviews. So Canvas has this option where you can read other people's essays and then grade them according to the same rubric that I'm grading by. Um, so uh, Canvas will automatically assign um, everyone, so everyone who submits an assignment on time, Canvas will automatically assign those people to other students' assignments to do a peer review for. Um, these peer reviews will show up in the discussion forum um, after the replies are due. Um, so if you go back into the discussion forum after the replies are due and see the peer review, uh, if you go through and do the review, um, I'll give you a point for every review you complete, um, and that gives you something like 26 points possible over the course of the semester by doing these peer reviews. Um, um, I also collect engineering ethics memes. If you have engineering ethics memes you want to uh, share with me, and I'll share them with future classes, um, there's also a place in Canvas to share some of those. Um, that's 66 possible points of extra credit. Um, this is enough to make up for losing one or uh, missing one assignment, uh, one one lesson assignment or so. Um, so that's uh, helpful. Um, about that peer review, uh, the peer reviews that you leave are not anonymous. Um, please don't confuse the peer reviews with your discussion replies. Uh, the replies. Uh, the replies should be posted directly in the discussion forum, but the peer reviews go to this separate Canvas uh, page where there's a rubric. You can also leave comments in the peer review, but you should leave grading comments, comments about the writing style and so on, in the peer in the peer review, and leave your actually substantive comments about the content of posts and, and replies in the discussion forum. Um, the, the goal of peer review is uh, to give you another uh, avenue of engagement with um, other students in class, um, also to give you some insight into the grading process. Um, if you're filling out rubrics, you have a better idea of what I'm doing when I'm filling out the rubrics. Um, also, it, it gives a kind of a double check on my own grading practices. If the peer review grades are wildly different from the grades that I'm giving, maybe that shows um, I, either I'm uh, grading something inappropriately or maybe students don't totally understand the, the grading rubric, but it shows that something's an issue. So um, again, that, that's just extra credit, uh, just if, if you want it. Um, that's the end of my slide deck. Let me put myself back on screen here. Um, um, thank you, every, everyone, for, for sitting through this video. It's about an hour long, a little over an hour, it's longer than I wanted it, but um, hopefully I went over enough information that you have a good idea of what the course is about and what to expect this semester. Um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end it there so you can get going on the class. If you have any questions, let me know in Discord or by email, um, and I will see you in lesson one.